Uh, hi everyone, welcome to today's CNCF webinar on Creus. Uh, it is a CLI tool to install or set up observability stack on your multi-cluster multi setup to observe or to get metrics for your deployed applications. Quick introduction, my name is Yachika. I'm a senior product engineer working in InfraCloud Technologies. Uh, my experience from last couple of years is in developing in Golang. Uh, around operators, controllers, and stuff. Yeah. Hey everyone, this is Rishi Kesha Rishi. I'm the VP of delivery at InfraCloud. Uh, I typically look at uh, the pre-sales and growth part of the company along with uh, general project execution. Uh, let's talk briefly about the agenda for today. Uh, let's discuss uh, the problem the reason why we built Creus in the first place. What were the factors that drove us to write a utility like Creus, which can set up an observability stack in a multi-cluster fashion in an easier manner? Uh, we'll talk briefly about the solution that Creus is, uh, a brief topology of, we can showcase a brief, brief topology that can be set up using Creus. And then Yachika will run you through a demonstration uh, of Creus and how do you use it, uh, so on and so forth. So moving on, uh, the state of monitoring today uh, um, and uh, some salient points which actually uh, drove us to write uh, something like Creus. Uh, in our experience, talking to our customers, uh, they are help they are moving towards offering their products as a service to their end customers, right? So essentially SaaSification programs where uh, existing products are being offered as a SaaS service are underway uh, in a lot of space. Uh, these are typically microservices, uh, so multiple applications uh, which are cloud native in nature, uh, et cetera, right? And uh, as a result of this, the topology, the deployment topology of these applications, when you have to offer it as a service to multiple customers, uh, focusing on tenancy, isolation, uh, using the same shared infrastructure becomes very complicated. Uh, with the deployment topology becoming com complicated, so does the way of monitoring or observing these applications. Uh, add into the mix of a multi-cloud and a multi-cluster deployment scenario, uh, and this becomes even more harder to achieve, right? Uh, applications by themselves or the product that are offered to their end customers need to follow tenancy and isolation requirements in any case, right? And the metric data uh, that you observe for your applications is no different. That needs to be isolated, that needs to be well-preserved for a longer duration uh, so that you can run analytics, uh, you can identify patterns, you can reduce alert fatigue, you can start drilling down into monitoring what really matters and constantly iterate and get better at uh, looking at what signals uh, you can observe so that you are proactive, right? Uh, with this in mind, I think companies uh, with uh, a complicated deployment topology such as this uh, and the tenancy and isolation requirements and the high availability requirements that come along with it, uh, companies are increasingly finding the need to adopt monitoring solutions such as Thanos, Cortex, Victoria metrics, so on and so forth. Right? And that is exactly what Creus allows you to do. Uh, it allows you to bootstrap uh, these uh, highly available uh, monitoring solutions which are purpose-built and modular in nature, uh, which can run across uh, multiple clusters. Yachika now will talk about Creus, uh, the Creus UI, and then she'll briefly talk about the demonstration for today. So over to you, Yachika. Yeah, thank you, Rishi. Uh, so Creus is a CLI tool to easily install uh, your observability stack on multiple clusters, as I mentioned, right? And so far, we have added support for Prometheus and Thanos. Uh, using Creus, you don't have to worry about wiring uh, all these components together. Uh, you just use the Creus CLI tool to install uh, to generate a spec file, uh, which is a single source of truth on which Creus depends, and then you just apply it. Now, what that config file is, it's a, it's just a declarative file, like any declarative file in Kubernetes. So for example, like a pod where you mention like this is this kind of setup, or this is a template for that pod, uh, where you need this image or container and stuff. 
you just mentioned these kind of statements in your config file where you mentioned that this uh, stack like prometheus or thanos is, uh, is needed in uh, cluster 1 or cluster 2 or cluster 3 uh, clusters are just kubernetes clusters and then uh, you just apply that uh, spec file using creus uh, so it is creus responsibility to bring that expected change into a desired state uh, now you can generate any complicated deployment topologies uh, using creus I'll show you a sample deployment topology, which is this, uh, where you can see there are multiple uh, Kubernetes clusters. Uh, Prometheus is running over them. It's a federation kind of uh, system where multiple Prometheuses are remote writing uh, to Thanos or uh, Thanos is scraping metrics from uh, Prometheus using the Thanos sidecar running along with Prometheus. Uh, in multiple clusters. Uh, now you can uh, observe all the all of these metrics for your applications in Thanos Querier, which is right here in the left side of the box. And you can visualize all of your metrics uh, in Grafana dashboard also by adding that qu Querier store, Querier, Querier as a store or the endpoint of that Querier in your Grafana uh, dashboards. You can also view all of your metrics in Querier Frontend. There is a component called Querier Frontend or Querier itself also. And to achieve uh, long-term uh, storage capabilities, there is a object storage also, which is in the right side of the screen, uh, where Prometheus and Thanos, all of them are uh, posting metrics uh, to achieve long-term storage capabilities using any S3 GCP or Azure Blob storage, or we can even use local MinIO setup. Now, all of uh, this. Uh, complex deployment topologies uh, is very uh, hard or it is not as smooth as uh, possible and that is why we have built creus because it's really easy and it's just and it's really easy to do this kind of complex setup uh, using this cli tool uh, i'll move on to next slide now on top of creus cli we have built creus ui which is a tool which is a UI uh, tool to design uh, or create your monitoring uh, deployment topologies. Uh, you can add multiple clusters. Uh, on the left side of the screen, you can see there are multiple draggable components. You can drag all these components to the canvas and put it inside the clusters, uh, configure them, attach them, and then add some object storages, and then uh, download uh, the, export the values and apply it. Uh, this UI tool is highly extensible or highly customizable. You can design anything you want to. You can configure any value. Uh, if you click on any uh, any uh, component, you will get a pop-up where you can answer a few questions. And then uh, based on those values, you'll get a configuration file. Uh, I'll. Uh, I'll uh, in the demo part, I'll uh, showcase you the UI. I'll show you how uh, how to create a sample uh, topology file. I'll generate a spec out of it, and then I'll apply that spec, and we'll see the actual setup uh, happening. I'll open a Creus UI. Yeah, so uh, this is a page. I'll. This is a, a product tour which we are getting here. I'll just walk you through it. Uh, you can see, uh, you can add a pre-baked template over here. And then uh, you can also build your depo deployment topology from scratch by dragging these components. And then uh, I'll, as I mentioned, I'll create a deployment topology. Uh, sorry, I think it's not added. I'll. I think it's added, but somewhere out of the canvas. Yeah, here it is. I'll just rename this cluster two. What I'll create is I'll create three clusters: uh, two for Prometheus and then one for Thanos. I'll drag these components here. If you put it outside the cluster, it says just put me inside a cluster because it's of no use uh, putting it outside a, thana or a cluster. And then uh, I'll also need uh, object storage. I'll use uh, AWS S3. I'll name it something like my AWS bucket. 
I'll not fill on uh, fill in these details as of now. Um, I'll configure Prometheus server. Oh, I have to answer these few questions that if you, I need a fresh installation, yes or no. Uh, no means there is already a Prometheus server running, and we just uh, add Thanos sidecar along with Prometheus server. And then I'll name it something. This is just a sample name. You can give it anything. Uh, namespace. I want everything in monitoring namespace. Uh, if I need if I need a sidecar or a receiver mode, sidecar mode is where Prometheus uh, Prometheus server will have a sidecar Thanos sidecar running alongside it, and then it will uh, the Prometheus uh, the Thanos server will scrape metrics from that sidecar. So I am designing a sidecar topology. I'll just say a sidecar, and if you notice, there's a sidecar is added uh, with this Prometheus server. I'll uh, add same kind of things for my other Prometheus running in another cluster too, uh, in same namespace, and then sidecar, and same we can add uh, answer a few questions for Thanos also. I'll just skip answering all these questions as of now. Save. I'll, I will connect Prometheus with Thanos and this also because Thanos needs to access the Prometheus server. And then to achieve long term storage capabilities, I'll connect Prometheus server to AWS S3 also because the sidecar will add these uh, metrics to. Uh, this bucket and then server also need access to s3 uh, because there is a store gateway in front of uh, querier to query these uh, long-term stored metrics uh, now uh, the deployment topology is ready and then what we can do is we just export these values we got these values based on the questions or whatever we have create, designed, uh, with, uh, which says is there are uh, three clusters, cluster one, cluster two, and cluster three. And cluster one's type is Prometheus. Uh, and then it says that installation, yes, we have to do the new installation. Uh, name is Prometheus, namespace, mode, which is sidecar. And then the object store config, which is this uh, Prometheus server is connected to. And then cluster two, which is also Prometheus. And then there's a cluster th three, which is of type Thanos and and some values of those uh, of the of Thanos. And then in the end, we have this object store config list. We can add multiple object stores here. But as of now, we have only S3. And then uh, there's this name, unique name for all the object store. And this name I'm referring here in my uh, monitoring components, right? Uh, so uh, I wanted to show this also. We can add a pre-baked template also, uh, which has receiver or sidecar mode. We designed a sidecar mode. I'll show you a receiver mode also. This is not uh, very different than that, but uh, the value is different where it has this receiver config also, uh, where uh, uh, this Thanos uh, Prometheus server is remote writing to Thanos server. There is no sidecar running. Uh, Thanos server is not scraping the metrics. It's it's Prometheus, which is remote writing uh, using the remote write APIs to Thanos server. Uh, but it has all the same object, uh, long term storage capabilities in Thanos server and all these uh, things. Right. I, I can even show you the values, which is pretty much same. Uh, by adding a pre-baked template, you will get a template and then some pre-populated values also. Uh, I'll show you to uh, apply how to apply this config file. I already applied it uh, because it takes some time. So I applied it before uh, starting the demo. Uh, you just run create spec apply config file in the config file name. Uh, what it does is it validates the YAML file, run pre-flight error checks in all of your clusters, uh, which says that it's according to the schema or not. You cannot add any extra value in your spec file because it done it uh, it runs all the schema checking and stuff, and then uh, it it uh, it uh, installed Prometheus and Thanos or whatever is written uh, inside the 
clusters. We'll verify that all the pods are in running state. Uh, and yes, uh, I'll show you. Uh, I'll put forward this Thanos courier service, and I'll show you the uh, metrics from multiple Prometheus. Okay, you can see there are uh, multiple uh, these endpoints which are Prometheus server, two Prometheus server which we gave access to uh, to our querier, and we can also verify it. Uh, I'll go to my cluster one, which is Prometheus. I'll get the service, and then the it's this is a service or uh, external service of type load balancer. This is external IP, and we can verify 35 This is the endpoint, and then cluster two. Uh, it's 35, 97, 74, and 62. Yeah. So both the uh, clusters, Prometheus 1 and Prometheus 2, are uh, sending uh, metrics are accessible to querier. And then uh, I can run a sample metric, show you some metrics. So yeah, these are the metrics coming. Uh, you can see there are these nodes are from cluster 1, and few nodes are from cluster 2. And all the metrics are coming from multiple clusters. Uh, yeah, anything, Rishi, you want to add here about Creus yeah. UI or config file, anything? Yeah, so I think the general idea or the general user experience that we uh, made Creus with, with in mind, uh, which Yachika, by the way, covered, was that you uh, you model your deployment topology uh, of your observability stack, uh, be it a receiver mode or a sidecar, uh, or a hybrid of both of them, uh, along with long-term storage, so on and so forth, and configure that entirely. And you get a single source of truth, which is the YAML schema that uh, Yachika did walk you through. Right Now, the YAML schema is basically a subset of all the configuration values that Thanos or Prometheus by themselves allow you to configure. Uh, the reason for that is because we felt that these are the uh, values that we most tinker around with when we are wiring these uh, multi-cluster uh, sort of Prometheus, Thanos, the endpoints, the sidecar endpoint exposed to the querier, the store gateway, the front end, and there are several components that you have to uh, sort of configure. Right? Uh, as we move along, we will start adding more and more uh, uh, configuration options in the YAML specification uh, anyways, right? And you can uh, create any sort of topology out of the Creus UI. At the end of the day, you should be able to export these values out, uh, which serves as a single source of truth uh, so that you know what is deployed in production uh, when you actually apply that spec. And the entire orchestration happens through Creus, right? Uh, we would eventually be adding more and more features. So uh, we adopt a GitOps pattern for uh, the single source of truth or the YAML that you have specified so that we could keep reconciling on that, uh, so on and so forth. But we encourage uh, anybody and everybody to sort of, this is a completely open source tool. Uh, you'll find it in the Infra Cloud GitHub organization with the Creus, uh, with Creus as the repository name. Uh, we encourage any sort of help that we can get, uh, be it uh, request for features, uh, contributions uh, in the code, uh, documentation, so on and so forth. Right. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I think that is essentially the user uh, journey that we visualize it to be. Uh, yeah, that's all that I wanted to add in. So. Yeah, thank you so much. Yes. So this was the demo part. Uh, we get aggregated view for all of your uh, clusters, uh, for all of your Prometheus running on multiple clusters. And that was it.
please check out uh, Creus repo. It's here, github.com, Creus, infracloud.io, Creus. And we have also written or published a blog post. Please go through it. Uh, try using it. Uh, uh, report issues. And yeah. Feature Thanks a lot. Thank you, everyone.